implementation of the new constitution could be greatly jeopardized. What will you do as William Ruto? The way to the future, in my opinion, is that we must, as the president said, our politics must be on the basis of issues, they must be on the basis of ideas. For a very long time, we have settled for politics of individuals or politics of ethnicity or politics of um, uh, events and people. And, and I will insist uh, as, as a Kenyan leader that we must elevate our politics to that level where we will be discussing ideas and good ideas must give way to better ideas. And I am confident that moving forward in that direction, we will surely um, have an, a nation that we can all be proud of, that is stable and that is prosperous. Mushima, let me allow you to go to Parliament and to Cabinet Great. for that swearing in, very important. Very interesting comments there from different leaders, from the leader of the Committee of Experts, from the Member of Parliament for uh, Buddha Lange, who is also a Member of the Committee of Parliament on Implementation of the New Constitution. Most of the leaders capturing exactly what President Kibaki and the Prime Minister Raila Odinga that this is a new beginning for this country. It's the time to move forward. It's the time to forget the past. It is not the time to decide or to take stock of who voted how and who did not vote that it is the time for leaders to come together and put issues on the table as far as implementation of this new constitution. Beatrice Marshall and my colleague Michael Royer have been holding brief at our main studio at the Bomas of Kenya and I take you back to Beatrice and Michael. Yes, Emmanuel, but we are here at Uhuru Park, not the Bomas of Kenya. Well, indeed, members of parliament now talking or taking that reconciliatory tone that was taken earlier on by the president and the prime minister. In fact, the prime minister earlier on is saying that now the spirit of national harmony should be uh, encompassed in the new Kenya, in the new beginning. And that your constitution has set us free. The words of the Prime Minister. The President also uh, ushering in the Second Republic, of course, as he promulgated and signed and sealed the promulgation instruments and bringing us to this new era, as he said, the dawn of a new era. And he, he stated that the success of this new Republic depends on the talent and hard work of the population and on us as Kenyans unleashing our full potential. And I think that's a critical point there, that the potential needs to be unleashed and it depends on leaders facilitating for that potential to be released. Indeed, of course, the president talking about this being a new chapter that will bring an end to issues like unemployment, issues like food insecurity, issues of poverty. There are a lot of expectations. A, a recent poll yesterday putting the optimism of Kenyans at an all-time seven-year high at 80%. Kenyans expecting uh, a lot of changes from the constitution that has, that has now become the supreme law of this land. Just to go back to uh, what will happen from now on, President Mwai Kibaki this morning signed the new constitution. It became law. He signed six copies of that. One of those copies will now sit in parliament buildings. It will replace the old constitution, which was signed at the dawn of independence by the queen. Now, the president has today signed a new constitution, and one of those copies, very tellingly, will replace the old one in parliament buildings. Michael, I find that uh, very exciting and really a new beginning for this country from um, a, a constitution that was adopted during post-colonial era to one that has now been adopted 47 years later. Nick, today is a very special day because this doesn't happen often, that a country has a new constitution and not because there is any significant war or dispute. And I think also it, it is good to state that there are phases to the implementation of the constitution as it stands. Today it's been promulgated and the detailed schedule shows what will happen next. Uh, the expectations are high at 80%. Is everything going to happen immediately? Not quite. I think we'll, we'll walk out of Uhuru Park and believe that it, everything is going to be different, but for as long as the spirit and the attitude of Kenyans themselves remains the same, it's, it will remain a challenge to implement. And I think speaking earlier to the head of the European uh, Union delegation, he did say that it depends a lot on this momentum to implement continuing as opposed to it's dying or you know after the fanfare will we continue 
with the hard work of implementation. The fanfare, of course, is continuing behind us here. Uh, the Kenyan public not as ready to leave uh, these historic grounds just yet. Uh, the heads of state and uh, President Mwakibaki's guests have already departed for uh, State House Nairobi. Of course, members of parliament will be heading to parliament buildings where they will be sworn in at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, but the president has taken his oath of office and his oath of allegiance to the constitution. Uh, the prime minister has also done the same. The vice president has done the same. But the speaker of the National Assembly will take his oath of office and oath of allegiance to the constitution in parliament buildings. Now, an emotional moment here. Some telling words from the prime minister. He said that today we are witnessing the birth of a nation which he termed historic coming barely two years when this country was almost a torn apart.